In this video, I'm gonna share with you seven tips that will help you become a better programmer. So if you become a better programmer, you can get a developer job faster. And if you become a better programmer, you will be more confident. And if you are more confident, you'll be making more money. If you make more money, then you'll end up reaping the rewards of your work. You can work from home, you can afford a better lifestyle. You can start investing into different things. Like your life is gonna change dramatically if you learn this skill. And I am the living proof of that. My life has been changed dramatically. And I'm gonna share with you some of the tips that will help you become that top dog developer. I'm gonna help you learn exactly what you have to do to overcome the bullshit that you'll have to deal with in this journey, okay? So let's get into it. All right, so the first tip is to spend time writing better code. And here I have an example. I don't know how far you are in your learning journey, but this will apply to you if you're a complete noob or if you have five years of experience. The better you can write your code, the better of a developer you will be because you're writing code for other people, not for the computer. Because if you look at this example that I have over here, we can see that, okay, I have a string, blah, 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 and then I have a variable called A and I'm taking the first letter and I'm uppercasing it. Then I have the rest of the letters and I'm gonna lowercase them. And I have another variable called final where I add A plus rest to create a word that has the first letter uppercased, okay? If you don't know what that is, I understand. If you have some experience, you'll probably be able to read this code. But even if you have zero experience in coding, if you look at the second example, where I have the variable first letter, and you can figure out that, okay, I'm gonna uppercase the first letter, because you can tell from the variable name that I'm uppercasing it, and um, or that I'm grabbing it, and then I have the rest of the letters in another variable, and then I'm lowercasing them, and then I have a variable called uppercase first word. So like, my code tells you what is happening in there okay and the better you get at this i cannot really stress this enough this is so important the better you get at this the better you get at writing this type of code that another human can understand the more valuable you'll be as a developer like guaranteed hands down this is gonna change your life trajectory as a developer okay this is gonna lead to confidence ability to create more complex applications let's talk about that for a second like, imagine you write an application that has all these weird variables and all these weird function names and whatnot. It's gonna take so much time for you to create something of meaning because you always need to debug something. You always need to spend time thinking about it. If you have to think about your code, that code is bad, okay? That's my take on it. And then if you have better code, that's gonna lead to less bugs, okay? And you'll also be able to pass interviews with Breeze. Imagine writing this type of code in an interview versus writing this type of code. The people in the interview will tell that you know your stuff and you're not just there to mess around. Okay, super important, game changing, and I'm gonna leave this document in the description of this video. And then I linked a naming cheat sheet that I've been using for years, okay? And my students are using it and I'm using this to actually judge the code that my students are writing. You can read all about it. It's not rocket science. It's not difficult at all. And none of this stuff from here, it's like difficult or overly complex. You just have to do it, okay? So how do you get better at this? You need to be conscious about it, right? Do not be a zombie while you're writing your code. Think about this. Is someone else who doesn't know me or doesn't know this code will be able will that person be able to understand this if not you've done it wrong i review the code of my students pretty much every single day and then i tell them what to do better and why they've done it badly or what they can do to be more descriptive this is a game changing and if you can watch all my testimonials you'll see that people are always talking about this experience well you cannot get to a level where you can write really good code without experience okay so this is gonna come in time it's not gonna be something that you are able to develop overnight okay it's gonna take months if not years but if you are conscious about it you can work towards developing it okay and uh, also taking time off and revisiting some of your old code you probably heard this before but whenever you look at your old code you're like cringing and that's good that means you've improved but also try to figure out what have you improved upon okay and how would you do it better next time okay next tip 
spend some time getting better at design or getting familiar with design principles in general okay you don't need to be a designer okay this is not your job but your job as a front-end developer is to build the visual part of the application even if your job is not to design the application right it's a great idea to start at least developing a sixth sense for what is good design and why it's a good design okay you can learn this really quickly it's gonna take you 30 minutes at least to have the main idea behind it and then try to apply the principles whenever you build a website or an application like it's always a work in progress design is a discipline that can complement your main skill which is front-end development okay do not settle for mediocre looking applications recruiters and hiring managers will judge you harshly on how your websites and applications look like i cannot stress this enough people are visual right and if they see your bullshit looking application they will instantly judge you no matter how great of an innovative idea you had in your application that's the name of the game and you have to play the game by its rules do not hate hate the game it is what it is okay so i'm gonna give you an example this is made by one of my students okay again this is not for your portfolio although a bunch of people put this in their portfolio this is a calculator app you shouldn't have this in your portfolio you should use this to learn okay very important stuff but this is absolutely amazing it looks very nice very crisp i hope you can agree with that but now if i remove the css oh it looks like bullshit. it's the same functionality right it's the same functionality it works exactly in the same way but now it doesn't look good okay and because of that if you have an application that looks badly you'll be judged on how it looks first not how it functions okay so that's another tip for you now how did i get better at design not a god at design by any means but when i was learning code i signed up to a challenge called daily ui again it's going to be linked underneath this video and you just have to put your email and every single day you'll receive a challenge right like for example create a sign up form okay obviously you're not a designer but what you can do is you can make an account on dribble you can look up daily ui 01 okay or you can go to figma community again i'm going to link it in the description and you can type in daily ui challenge one and then you can get a challenge from someone else someone that did that challenge and then you can replicate it with html css javascript react whatever you're using third tip get shit done when you say you're gonna do it okay even though you are learning code and this isn't your job yet treat it like you're getting paid this is what one of my students one of my best students said yesterday like hey this is uh, not your job and you're not getting paid for it but treat it as such okay that's the mindset of a professional no matter what you do you want to do it at your best or you want to do it to whatever that standard is okay slack off and you'll pay the price of inaction okay it's waste more months in an as satisfying job missing out on opportunities missing yet another holiday in europe spending more time and money commuting instead of working from home a cafe or a holiday location if i want i can book a trip to amsterdam for like three days i can work from there do my thing then come back you can do the same it's really up to you uh, how fast you arrive at, at your destination i know oh not everyone is the same blah 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 but really it's up to you how fast you get there don't blame anyone else but yourself if you don't spend the time and you know you should be whose fault is it that you are taking five years instead of one year your fault the next tip is to have clear goals and milestones okay so let's talk about the parkinson law parkinson law is the old adage that work expands to fill the time allocated for its completion meaning if you have no time limit for getting a job and you just want to you know do it then it's going to take you years there's no urgency but if you say i'm going to do it in one year by this exact time and date you will do everything in your powers to get there okay i've done it for myself in 12 months from now i'm gonna be hired and i've done it i think in 11 months if you have no goals and milestones you'll end up learning forever you don't want to be learning forever you want to be earning okay you want to learn for as little time as possible get as good as possible in the shortest time frame possible then get paid okay so set a deadline by what time you want to get a job and be realistic different people work differently okay so if you know that you're a slower learner work on that first it might take you let's say 18 months instead of 12 months 
okay? But still have a deadline set in mind for yourself. Actionable steps, by what time do you want to get a job, okay? By what time are you going to be building your first website? If you are messing around trying to learn all the HTML tags and all the CSS properties, you'll never get there. By the way, if you want that, I have a free course on how to get started with HTML and CSS and build the Apple website. That's the second link in the description. By what time you'll start to learn JavaScript? By what time you'll start preparing for interviews? By what time you'll start building your app for your resume? And the side note, if it takes longer than you wanted, that's fine, but get yourself as close as possible to that deadline. The next tip is always ask, what can I do better next time? Beginners should start with a lot of volume, a lot of code, a lot of applications, a lot of websites. And once you have everything under control, switch to working more time on one thing. Okay. And I'm going to tell you a story of one of my friends who got signed as a music producer in two months. Me and another buddy of mine, we started learning uh, music production and we were making dubstep back in 2007 or something like that. And I think he got started one month before me or two months before me. I was still thinking, oh, should I start? I was looking for the best tutorial. Like you are with coding. What he was doing, it was really cool. He was trying to make one song per day. Okay. So he did that for like two months. And then after the second month, he got signed. And then with time, he started taking more time. So instead of making a song every day, he was making a song every three days. Then after a while, he started making a song every seven days then every month, then every six months, then every year, okay? He wasn't slacking off, but he was working on every single detail. He was spending hours and hours crafting the perfect sound, the perfect drum, the perfect bass, the perfect vocal, the perfect uh, reverb, the perfect delay. But that only happened because he had a lot of volume first. And that's what we are doing in my coaching program as well. We start with building out a lot of stuff. After a while, we switch to building the crypto app, which is gonna take roughly three months. Then we have a team project which is going to take four, maybe even six months because you need to think volume first, then quality second. The problem is that most people are stuck not doing anything in the beginning. And then once they get their ass kicked into, the ge into gear, they start with the volume applications and then they put those on their portfolios. Their portfolios suck because they have no idea about design and then they never get a job. Okay. Once you finish something, take some time to reflect upon what you've done. Okay and think about what you could do better. Better design, better code, more features, less features, less bugs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Slow and steady wins the race, but don't get complacent. And this ties back with the point that we talked about 2 minutes ago. I often hear people saying that coding is a marathon and you should take your time, which is kind of right. But learning to code is not a marathon. Learning to code is the prep for the marathon. The marathon is your career. And so if your career is a marathon and learning to code is the prep, treat it as such. If you want to qualify for the marathon, you need to be serious about it. Create your day around learning to code. This is coming from one of my students from the program. She said that she created her day and she fits everything else in around coding because coding is the main thing. So you have to be intentional about it, okay? You cannot let coding become a thing you do when you remember about it. You'll not stumble into a six figures developer job by mistake. You'll not get abs by mistake. You need to be intentional, you have to have a plan and you need to stick to the plan even when things are not going the right way because life is never gonna be perfect. You'll always have bullshit thrown at you and you need to learn how to navigate life. And it's your choice to do what you're supposed to do, right? It's your choice. Do you wanna mess around and fuck around and hope for the best and complain about the financial crisis and complain about AI or you wanna be serious about it, build stuff, learn stuff, develop yourself mentally and become a resilient person that can learn and do whatever the hell you want to do. And the last thing is to join a community of people that are in the same race as you. This is probably one of the most important things on this list. Being surrounded by killers and savages that can support you, lift you up, okay, and motivate you as you go through your journey is massive. This is what I was missing when I was learning code. It was me against the world. It doesn't have to be this way. And I, I just read this post from someone who just joined my program. And whenever someone joins my program, they make an intro post and uh, Miwara here says, this program is just what you need. I have designed it in such a way to not feel too overwhelmed. 
I always come with the right examples and you always have the Zoom calls. The community where to ask all your questions. Yes, I'm promoting my shit, but my shit works and you need it. You need it if you want to be a savage developer and if you want to do it fast and right. If you want to waste around, if you are 18 and you are living in your mom's basement, you don't need this, okay? You have all the time in the world, but if you are in your late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s and you want to do it fast and good, you don't have the privilege to waste your time. If you want to be part of my mentorship, apply via the first link in the description and you can check out the community you can check out the live calls you can check out some of the free courses that we have in there by clicking the second link in the description that's it see ya